So for the basic function of the heart, as they usually say it's the size of a fist, probably fits pretty well. And the blue side denotes the deoxygenated blood that is coming from the body, coming back to the heart. So you have from the superior vena cava coming from the upper part of the body, your upper limbs, your head, coming down your inferior vena cover from the rest of the body comes down to your right atrium. Then your right atrium collecting chamber, if I can call it that way, goes down through, through your valve to your right ventricle, right at the bottom, what you're seeing here. And that pumps through your pulmonary artery to your lungs, both your left and your right lung clean out your blood, remove your carbon dioxide, oxygenate it well, and then it comes back to your left atrium. The left-sided collecting chamber goes through your valve on that side called your mitral valve. Then you have your left ventricle, the muscular beats that you're always taught in school that pumps blood through your main vessel called the outer to the rest of the body going up to the head, the upper limbs, and then down to supply the lower half of the body. Imu chagya sich la kwaet ne thinye khae muti ga muu lindo anan go sich chiga muti chutan yonga hoi ko suke aga te bwe ki. So when you say cardiac, you mean anything that pertains to the heart in general. So it could either be structural involving the different layers of the heart. So you have one that's a layer that covers the heart called the pericardium. You have the muscle of the heart itself called the myocardium. Then you have the inner lining of your heart, which is usually called endocardium. The diseases that affect the heart could simply be classified into two main groups. Could either be what you say congenital or acquired. Congenital could be something that um, essentially you're born with, it's something that you record, it's, there's no known cause for it, though there are certain um, syndromes that are associated with it, like Down's syndrome and some um, diseases in pregnancy or tobacco smoking in pregnancy is known to cause some of those congenital diseases. For the acquired, then they affect the different either um, parts of the heart, either the vessels or the structure of the heart itself. For most of the congenital heart diseases, um, they may be asymptomatic in terms of your child may actually grow well if the problem is not so big to actually cause symptoms in the child. But for those that become symptomatic, you may notice your child um, using a lot of energy when, breathing, when breastfeeding, so they'd be sweating a lot, or they may have blueing of the lips, blueing of the fingers. Um, they become they don't grow as fast, they have growth stunting and failure to thrive. Those are some of the most common symptoms you'd see a child with congenital heart disease present with. For treatment of the congenital um, heart diseases, it depends on the cause of the congenital heart disease. If it's some of them, if for those that you've had, people say has a hole in the heart, some may actually close spontaneously on their own. But for those that progress on and the child becomes symptomatic and will require treatment, they may actually require open heart to rectify some of the defects that they may have in the structure of the heart. Yongo kiyo chila kweti atitae tamuilelda, kunyo alugi gochi kericheg en kila bitut. For most of the children, once they've had their treatment done in terms of if it's either medical management or surgical management, for the medical management, and that would require subsequent clinic follow-up because every time as the child grows or as the child develops, then their physiology changes and you'll have to adjust their medications depending on whichever season they come in, in the low season when they're feeling unwell or when they're doing better. For those that have had surgery, they're clinically more improved. They can, most of them resume to their daily activities. They play like any other child. They basically end up living, quote unquote, a normal life. They would definitely require subsequent post-operative clinic follow-up, which will be in their closest facility where they actually have resources to a cardiac department. But thereafter, they are happy children. For the so-called holes 
in the heart. Some of them are spontaneous. You never know what might have precipitated them. Some are associated with the syndromes, like Down syndrome is associated with some of those defects or holes in the heart. Others may be caused by, as I had mentioned, um, tobacco smoking in pregnancy is one of the causes for some of the congenital heart diseases that children may present with. It is highly advisable for every Kenyan person to get an insurance cover. We have the national scheme, we have the private insurance firms, and that will help you in terms of catering for the cost for the treatment of the heart problem because truth be told it is quite a costly procedure and that will help each and every Kenyan afford the treatment that they deserve. Gladys Chemtai, Kogame Tabla Kwet Negi Gisich Kotinya Gai Mutiga Mulendo. Moe Nandat Kole, Kisich Torite Kobun Svitali Tab Tenno, Kosuke Agen Yisek Chuchang, Chagi Gosich La Kwen Yin Gai Mutik Chuchang. And then Nanyungu Gladys Chemtai, Lacon, <laughs> Kerana <laughs> Monday, <laughs> Quagatabulis <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> The heart surgery itself may or may not affect your lifespan and the quality of life that you live. I may, may not have statistical um, evidence to support what I'm saying currently, but from what I've seen, the two are almost the same. Whether you have your heart surgery, if it's had early enough and you're able to recuperate well, then you end up living an essentially long life, long and healthy life. Kama Dr. Violet Kole, in Bomet County, Kosiche Big Chuchang Gai Muti Gamu Lelda, Yanga Goe, Kosir Lagok Chigisiche, Kotinye Gai Muti Chotan. In Bomet County, what we mostly get to see is the acquired form of the disease, which is mainly um, rheumatic heart disease caused by an infection that they have earlier on in their childhood. We don't, that's what we see most commonly here in our setting, the rheumatic heart disease, which is pretty common. 
So for the adult presentation of acquired heart diseases, the spectrum is wider because they've had longer years to be exposed to the infection and therefore the changes they've acquired in their heart have actually slowly been progressing through the years. So for them, the acquired becomes more. They may have, you may have a 40 something year old individual still presenting with the same rheumatic heart disease. But for them, because of the concomitant hypertension and diabetes, which also cause heart disease on their own separately, you still have the coronary artery disease in adults. So for the adult presentation of acquired heart diseases, their spectrum keeps growing. Kora, kumo anandat kule atabwe gab chi ko mo chabo ibkai muti gamu bolendo. Lifestyle mainly affects, if I can call it, the two main diseases which you would have would be hypertension and diabetes, because each of them have their own heart disease, if I can call it. You have hypertensive heart disease and you still have diabetic heart disease. Now together, then definitely it ends up being synergistic effect in terms of how it affects the heart. So lifestyle does play a key role when it comes to taking care of your heart. For the diabetic patients, first line of management for diabetes is lifestyle changes and dietary changes. So that's a very key role when it comes to long-term effect. It's not an immediate thing, that just, just as the disease grows and manifests slowly, the changes when it comes to the heart also, trying to either keep the heart or improve its condition also occurs progressively. And also for hypertension, some of them are told low salt diet and what they call the DASH diet also play a role when it comes to changing or affecting the general health of the patient.